from creator Jim Henson, co-director Frank Oz, and Gary Kurtz, the producer of Star Wars, comes a unique world. A wondrous civilization and a totally new concept in fantasy adventure. The Dark Crystal, from a screenplay by David O'Dell and Jim Henson. Coming soon to a theater near you. All right, we got uh, the Chamberlain out of uh, his uh, packaging. And uh, we got him here to uh, show off here. Gonna, there's the side you couldn't see. Now, of course, you, this is what he looked like through most of the movie. Um, if you remember, if any, most of you people might have seen it. I don't know how anybody have not seen it. <laughs> it's over 32 years old now. Um, he, of course, his basic job was basically to, I don't know his other tasks, but his, one of his tasks was to pick the new emperor. The, the original, the emperor at the beginning of the movie died, and um, it was hit up to the, the Chamberlain to pick a new um, emperor. Well, he decided to take matters in his own hands and step up as the, the new emperor. Now, the general, who, of course, commands the forces of the, the Gartham, those uh, crab-looking creatures, uh, stepped in. He said, oh, no, you're not. I want to be emperor. Well, there was a challenge. And uh, Chamberlain said, trial by stone. And they uh, he took swords and would smash him against a um, like a giant rock and whoever broke a piece of the rock a huge piece of the rock would be declared the winner and um, would uh, be the new emperor well well of course as you might know remember uh, the uh, the uh, general won he broke the biggest piece and of course the poor chamberlain was stripped of his garments. They had like this, you know, flowing robes and jewelry and all this kind of stuff. And the other Skeksis just came upon him and ripped his clothes off. He was practically naked. That was the only nudie scenes you ever saw of the Muppets. <laughs> um, well, bef uh, before he left, he was of course banished by the uh, the general. He gathers up whatever pieces of clothing he could get his hands on and he put them back on and uh, sculpt away. Uh, that's how, how he looks like this through most of the movie. And of course, uh, he, when he did return and brought Kira to the Emperor, he did get his robes back and he was allowed to be with the rest of the, the uh, Skeksis by, for the Great Conjunction. So, now, see he's these tattered robes here. And uh, there is some articulation, mostly in his head. His mouth don't move, but uh, his head can move up and down, and side to side, and sort of turn around here. Yeah, kind of like kind of like the puppet does. And his legs don't really move, even though there is some evidence of it could move. His tail is flexible. His arms can move up and down and out. Uh, his hands are kind of floppy. Yeah, they could, they could, the wrists can swivel. I want to drive a car. <laughs> and, uh, in pretty good detail. I mean, he looks just like the original puppet. Now, here's something interesting. Uh, this kind of goes back and you get to see what he has underneath. Now, um, they, uh, Jim Henson was asked, are these the, are these creatures male or female? And he said, well, they're an unpleasant combination of the two. Um, and basically the designer was the more effeminate of the bunch. Now here's one thing that they, they kind of did in the behind the scenes, I think in the uh, commentaries of the movie. Uh, now of course, as you know, the, mis the mystics and the Skeksis uh, were once one being. Now, if you remember, the, the Mystics had four workable arms. And you look at the Skeksis, and they only have two. Now, if you take a good look here and here, there are two shriveled arms. 
that they, I guess they don't really use. They kind of shriveled up, either when they were first made, created after the Urskex separated, or they might have had them and they just decided not to use them and they had them covered up and they just shriveled up over the thousand years of their existence. Now, uh, it's pretty cool. Now, this guy is done up. I wish his legs could move so you can pose him better. But you can pose his head and arms. Um, now, of course, one feature that, they, of course, they don't have, obviously, for this is that um, he has a trademark. Um, I don't know if it's because he, how he breathes or he does it on purpose, but he has what what the general slash emperor called a whimper. And he would go all the time, just when he was not talking, he would make that noise. So we don't know if that's actual whimper, or maybe some acquisitive sound. They really didn't delve too much about that, but uh it's pretty freaky here. But uh he's the best example. And oddly enough he is the only action figure from the line. I mean, there's statues of um, Jen riding his, uh, riding a, a Land Strider um, with some dolls of uh, Jen and Kira and all, but they never came out with a full line of Dark Crystal action figures. Um, which would have been pretty cool. This is the only one that so far has yet come into the market. Um, another uh, trivia fact here. Um, now, of course, both uh, Skeksil, the Chamberlain, and all the other characters in the story were designed by Brian Frow. He's a really pop, well-known, um, uh, let's call it an uh, artist. He is an artist. Um, sort of in the weird world of strange creatures, sort of... Um, medieval mythology type stories, you know, European uh, character creatures and stuff. And uh, back in the late 70s, the movie did take five years to produce and, and film and everything. And Brian Froud was chosen, and of course he designed all the characters, the mystics, the Skeksis, uh, the, the Gelflings, the pod people, everybody were designed by Brian Froud. And, uh, and he's still around. He's still alive, by the way. Um, he, of course, you, you can see what he, he looks like in the documentaries of the DVD, especially the Blu-ray, too. But, uh, and, uh, that's, you know, not too bad here. As I said, it did take five years for the movie to be produced. Um, but, uh, I might do a review of the movie one of these days. I don't know. So, uh, I just want you all to do, enjoy, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, last review of 2013. Of course, there will be tons more in uh, 2014. I'll probably be doing an update video soon. Uh, uh t well, tomorrow being January 1st, I'll do an up, uh, new year and, uh, January update video for 2014. And, uh, of course, stay tuned for, uh, reviews commentaries and whatnot here on the Multiverse.